The Civil War, The Big Question, Why Are There Shiite and Sunni Muslims? Uthman was assassinated by people who believed he was nepotistic. In particular, they felt he had unfairly placed people from his own clan in charge of Egypt, Syria, and other territories. So when the important people of Medina chose a new caliph after Uthman's death, they did not choose someone from Uthman's clan. Instead, they chose Ali, Muhammad's son-in-law and cousin. Others opposed this decision, including Uthman's family. Their opposition to Ali grew because they felt he did not punish the rebels who had killed Uthman. In the end, as is often true when people disagree about who should rule, civil war erupted. The civil war begins. This civil war was traumatic for many Muslims. It had only been 24 years since Muhammad's death, and in that time Muslims had fought side by side, winning over others to their faith and conquering huge amounts of land. Now, for the first time, they faced people of the same religion and even the same tribe. After winning the Battle of the Camel, Ali moved the center of the Muslim political world from Medina to the garrison town of Kufa. From there, he marched north towards Syria, where Muawiyah had his armies. Ali's forces met Muawiyah's along the Euphrates River, but both sides were reluctant to attack. The battle began only to be broken off shortly thereafter when Ali and Muawiyah agreed to seek a compromise. They appointed arbiters to find a way out of the conflict. The Battle of the Camel The Battle of the Camel the civil war was mostly fought between Ali and his followers on the one side, and Uthman's relatives, led by the governor of Syria, Muawiyah, on the other. Other prominent Muslims also became involved. One of the earliest battles in the civil war was the Battle of the Camel, 656, at Basra in modern-day Iraq. It was there that Ali fought against one of his greatest opponents, Aisha. You may remember that Aisha was a wife of Muhammad's and the daughter of Abu Bakr, the first caliph. She was also an important political advisor to the first caliphs, known for her fierceness and passion. Aisha was furious that Ali would not punish those who had murdered Uthman. She led opponents of Ali's into battle, directing them from a howdah, a kind of bed carried by a camel. Aisha was defeated and retired from political life. She lived out the rest of her life in Medina, where she died at the age of 64. Unfortunately, the arbiters offered a bargain that didn't satisfy either side. Even worse for Ali, some of his supporters left him because they were angry that he was looking for a compromise at all. In 661, five years after the civil war began, one of those former followers assassinated Ali. After Ali's death, his son Hassan briefly became caliph before deciding to retire to Medina. Perhaps he hated the idea of Muslims killing one another more than he liked the idea of being caliph. Or maybe he had seen too many caliphs suffer violent deaths. Whatever the reason, Muawiyah, Ali's rival, became the next caliph and the first civil war ended. This war, lasting five years, was very significant for the Muslims. It was the first time that they had opposed one another in battle. It also led to a schism that resounded through the centuries all the way to the present day. The Umayyad dynasty. Muawiyah ruled for 19 years. He was a strong ruler 
and kept the discontented supporters of Ali at peace. When Muawiyah was dying, he appointed his son Yazid as his successor. This was unusual in early Islamic history. Unlike in medieval Europe, the sons of the first caliphs had not succeeded them. Instead, it was the man considered most likely to lead the Muslims successfully who was chosen. In choosing Yazid, Muawiyah founded a dynasty of the Umayyad clan of the Quraysh. There was immediate opposition to this dynasty. Remember that part of the cause of the civil war had been the belief that Uthman favored his relatives too much. At the same time, many people felt that Muhammad's closest relatives should rule. So the feelings about whether authority should be inherited were complicated. What a cavalry might have looked like in the Battle of the Camel. The Shia and the Sunni. Around 15% of Muslims today are Shias, with most of the remaining being Sunnis. The Sunni are the majority in most Muslim countries, but in Iran and Iraq, the Shia are the majority. Over the centuries, there have been many tensions between the two branches of Islam. The Shiite and Sunni divide emerged in the time of Ali, Muhammad's son-in-law and cousin. The Shia, short for Shi'at Ali or followers of Ali, believed that Ali and his family were the true successors of Muhammad. They trace this all the way back to Muhammad's last sermon. For them, Muhammad was clearly appointing Ali as his successor. The Sunnis disagree with this interpretation of Muhammad's sermon. Instead, they believe that Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and later the Umayyads were Muhammad's rightful successors since they were chosen by the consensus of the Muslim community. The two branches of Islam have several different practices and beliefs, but they both believe in the Quran as Muhammad's revelation. Ali's younger son, al Hussein led the opposition to the Umayyads. He refused to accept Yazid as the new caliph, and a new war started. It ended fast because in 680, in the Battle of Karbala, Yazid's army killed al Hussein and his entire family. al Hussein's supporters called it a massacre and his death martyrdom, and Shiite Muslims still mourn the anniversary. Twelve more years of fighting would follow. By the end, Yazid's successor was triumphant, and the Umayyad dynasty continued to rule. But winning came at a great cost. The unity of Islam was destroyed. Mecca and Medina, both sacred towns, had been attacked in the civil war, and the Shiite supporters of Ali would never forgive the Umayyads for killing al-Hussein. Also, the expansion of Islam had slowed almost to a halt. The Muslims had been too busy fighting one another to conquer new territory. Remember, Islam was still very new. It had only been 60 years since Muhammad had died. In that time, the growth of the Islamic empire had been extraordinary. Many had converted, and old empires had been destroyed. It is easy to forget that, at the same time, the Muslim people were trying to decide who should lead them and why, both in politics and religion. Given the disagreements among the Muslims, it is all that much more remarkable that they were so successful. The combination of their message and their military and political genius was one of the most potent the world had ever seen. An Umayyad Qasr, Castle. The Umayyad Caliphate. The Umayyad Caliphate, which ruled the Islamic Empire for almost 100 years, was the first dynastic caliphate of the Muslims. Under it, the empire expanded to its greatest extent, reaching as far as Spain in the west and India in the east. 
the Umayyads moved the capital of the Islamic Empire to Damascus in Syria. It was an ancient city in a more central location than Medina. Islam had become a world power, and remaining in Arabia was no longer plausible. The Umayyads also started making their empire Arabic. Up to this point, the countries they had conquered continued using Greek, Latin, or Persian as their main languages. Little had changed in government or daily life as a result of the invasions. The Umayyads changed that. They made the official language of the empire Arabic. Following old Roman practices, they built and renovated roads across their empire. And they created milestones in Arabic, showing the distance to major cities and describing the improvements they had made. For the first time, the Islamic caliphs also built architectural masterpieces. These would continue to be built in the Islamic classical age. The Dome of the Rock, toward the end of the Islamic civil war. The Umayyad Caliph Abd al-Malik built the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem. It is one of the oldest Islamic buildings and Islam's first great masterpiece. Muhammad was believed to have ascended to heaven during his lifetime in an event called the Night Journey. Muslims disagree over whether this event occurred in Mecca or in Jerusalem. The dome is a shrine that some Muslims in later centuries and most Muslims today have identified as marking the location from which Muhammad was believed to have ascended. The dome combines architectural styles from different parts of the Islamic empire. The structure followed a Byzantine model, but the tiles were brought from Persia. The result was something completely new. That changed over the centuries. The prayer hall at the mosque of Cordoba, the mosque cathedral of Cordoba, the mosque of Cordoba, later converted into a Catholic cathedral, was built by the Muslims when they conquered Spain. Construction began in 784 CE, and the final modifications were completed 200 years later. The mosque is famous for its 856 pillars that have been compared to rows of palm trees. The pillars are arranged in a series of double arches that were an architectural innovation, allowing for high ceilings. A double arch consists of a lower horseshoe arch and an upper semicircular arch. Wedge-shaped elements in these arches. Are colored alternately red or white, giving the interior of the mosque its distinctive appearance. The massive dome is decorated with blue tiles and countless numbers of stars.